Okay, in this video, we're going to continue what we were talking about last time in section 2.4. Now we're going to put all those six translations together and look at graphing uh, when you have multiple transformations. I just want to warn you, these I'm going really fast here, so get your hand on the pause button. Anyway, on this first one, uh, notice that there's several things going on. We're going to have a horizontal shift and a vertical stretch. So I like to di diagram the translation in a se sequence like this. You're, you're less likely to make a, a, a mistake if you do this, because if you don't do the right translation in the right order, you might not get the right graph, okay? You can think of it as taking the square root of x and replacing x with x plus 3. That's 3 units to the left, remember? And then multiplying the y-coordinate by 2. So that's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. The graph becomes this. Notice, you can think of it point-wise. What happens to the point 1, 1? It gets moved 3 units to the left, so it becomes negative 2, 1. And then you multiply the y-coordinate by 2, it becomes negative 2, 2. So the point 1, 1 becomes the point negative 2, 2. All right, let's keep on going. This function here, you're going to start, your known function would be uh, x squared. So if you first take x squared and multiply the y-coordinate by negative 2, that's going to be a reflection as well as a stretch, isn't it? And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add 3 to the y-coordinate. So, so if you do that transformation, you get this. Now, what we're going to look at in section 2.5, the vertex is the point of interest, really. Well, what happens to the vertex under this transformation? When you multiply the y-coordinate by negative 2, it stays 0. But then when you add 3 to it, it becomes the point zero three. Okay, let's keep on going. I'll just do one more, then I'll give you some, some to practice. Again, I, I, I encourage you to think of it like, like this. You're taking the absolute value function. You replace x with x plus 3. That's a um, horizontal shift through the left. Then you uh, multiply the y-coordinate by uh, negative 1. That, that's a reflection across the um, x-axis. And last thing you do is, um, is subtract 1. That moves the graph down 1. So the graph look, looks like this. Again, think about what happens to 0, 0. When you... Um, Move it 3 to the left, it becomes negative 3, 0. When you reflect across the x-axis, it stays there, but when you move it down 1, it becomes the point negative 3, negative 1. Sketch the graph of these, and also, why don't you draw, see if you can draw a se sequence of transformations. Okay, in terms of the sequence, you can take x squared, replace x with x plus 1. What does that do? That shifts it 1 to the left. Then you, you multiply the y-coordinate by 2. That's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And the last thing is you, um, you subtract 3 from y. That, that moves it down 3. So the graph should have been looked kind of like this. Again, let's, let's pay close attention to the vertex. The vertex was 0, 0. Under this transformation, you shift it 1 to the left, so now it becomes negative 1, 0. You multiply y by 2, so it stays negative 1, 0. But then you, you subtract 3 from y, so it becomes negative 1, negative 3. Okay. Try another one. See if you can uh, sketch the graph of this function. Okay, now this one's kind of tricky. Do you remember what the graph of 1 over x looks, looks like? What you're doing here is replacing x with x minus 1. Remember what that does? That's a horizontal shift one unit to the right. So this is where it gets kind of sneaky. The, the black graph is, is 1 over x. See the point 1, 1? When you shift it 1 to the, one to the right, it becomes 2, one, two one. And this point, uh, negative 1, negative 1, becomes 0, negative 1. So the whole graph gets shifted one unit to the right. That's the red graph. Now, what also gets shifted one unit to the right is the vertical asymptote. There was a vertical asymptote at 0. When you shift everything to the right, the vertical asymptote becomes x equal 1 now. Interesting, huh? All right, try this one. This one isn't too hard. Okay, in terms of a sequence of transformations, all you're doing is reflecting the graph across the y-axis, right? So, if the, you start with the absolute value function, and when you reflect the absolute value function across the y-axis, it stays the same. And it turns out that shouldn't be too surprising, because isn't the absolute value of x already symmetric with respect to the y-axis? So when you take a graph that's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and you reflect it across the y-axis, you get the same graph back. And we have a name for that. That's called an even function. A good example of an even function would be f of x equals x squared. If you reflect it across the y-axis, you get the same graph back. It's even. Another inter interesting function is called an odd function. 
An odd function is one that's symmetric with respect to the ori origin. Now, what does this say about an odd function? If it's symmetric with respect to the origin, if you reflect it across the y-axis, you get exactly the same graph as if you reflected across the x-axis. So if you reflect across the y-axis, you get a graph kind of like that. If you reflect across the x-axis, you get the same graph. See? That's all the same. But it does provide an algebraic way to determine if a function is even, odd, or neither. Teachers love to ask these kinds of questions. The way you determine if a function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis or origin is if you plug in negative x for x and, and, and compute the formula, if you get the same thing you started with, then it's even. If you get negative 1 times what you started with, it's odd. And if you don't, then it's neither. So you take the, fu the function, you replace x with negative x, you get this. On the bottom, you just get x squared, but the top is negative x. And this happens to be negative 1 times f of x, so this is an odd function. Teachers love to ask you these kinds of questions where they don't give you a function, they, they give you a graph instead. So, um, well, why don't you try these two? I, I'll go over just a second. See if you can work these two on your own. Here are the, here are the, here's the graph of f of x. See if you can hit the pause button and graph 2f of x minus 1 on the same axis and also negative f of x plus 1. Okay, so on this first one, the first thing you're going to do to f of x is you're going to multiply the y-coordinate by 2 and then you're going to subtract 1 from the y-coordinate. So if you look at the um, the black graph is f of x. So let's just follow a couple points, shall we? The point is 0, 0. If you multiply the y-coordinate by 2, it's still 0, 0. And then if you subtract 1, it becomes 0, negative 1. The y-coordinate 1, 2, if you multiply the y-coordinate by 2, it becomes 1, 4. But then if, if, you, if you subtract 1, it becomes 1, 3. So this point turns into this point. And so on. Let's, let's take another one. Let's look at this point right here. If you multiply the y-coordinate by 2, it stays 2, 0. But then if you subtract 1, it becomes 2, negative 1. So if you were to continue that, you get the red graph. Now for this one, what's going on here? Well, here you're going to take f of x. You're going to replace x with x plus 1. That's a horizontal shift 1 to the left. Then when you multiply on the outside by negative 1, isn't that a reflection across the x-axis? So here we go. Let, let's just follow some points. The point 0, 0. You're going to move this 1 to the left, and then when you multiply it by negative 1, it stays negative 1, 0. This point right here, 1, 2, you're going to move it 1 to the left, but when you multiply it, when you reflect it across the x-axis, now it becomes 0, negative 2. This point, uh, 2, 0, when you multiply, when you move it 1 to the left, it becomes over here, but when you reflect across the x-axis, it stays there. And, the, and this one right here, um, this one, um, let's see, when you, when you move it 1 to the left, you get uh, 2, negative 2. But when you reflect across the x-axis, it becomes 2, positive 2. And the last one, when you move it 1 to the left, it goes over here. And when you, multi when you reflect across the x-axis, it stays the same. So this is how you do it. All right, well, why don't, we, why don't you try some of these guys? have got another round here, and we'll go over this in just a minute. See if, see if you can use this graph right here to sketch the graph of these three functions. You may have to hit the pause button now. Okay, for this first one, uh, what we're going to do here is on this one right here, we're going to reflect across the uh, y-axis, and then we're going to shift it down two units. So the graph should look like this. On the second one, on the second one, you're going to um, uh, remember this is the horizontal. This is actually going to stretch it by a factor of two. You're multiplying all the x-coordinates by two, so the graph should have looked like like, like this. And for the last one, this is the hard one, f of x equals uh, f of 1 minus x. You first have to look at it like this. Instead of looking at it as f of 1 minus x, rewrite it like this. Then you're taking the function, you're replacing x with x plus 1. That's going to be a shift of 1 to the left. Then you replace x with negative x, you see? That, that becomes a reflection across the um, y-axis, so the graph should look like that. If you don't do those steps in the right order, you get the wrong graph. Gotta go. Bye-bye.